Hello, I'm Simon and welcome to the Syrov YouTube channel. Today we're going to be dealing with uh, starting issues and that can either be cold starting or hot starting. You might have a car that starts perfectly fine when it's cold but then becomes a pig to start once you're out and about or vice versa. It takes forever to start when it's cold and then it's fine for the rest of the day and doesn't cause you any issues. Um, I'm going to be using diagnostics. Uh, I make no apologies for that because trying to solve starting problems on modern cars without diagnostics, well, it will just take you, not forever, but it just takes you longer than it needs to. So I'm going to be using this, which is an ELM327 dongle. I'm an Android phone user, so I can use this, which is a Bluetooth version. If you're on iPhone, then you need a Wi-Fi version of one of these dongles and then you have an app on your phone. So on Android it's uh, Talk Pro, that's my preferred one, although there's loads of, of apps out there. Um, Cost-wise, don't be complaining about price because these are like five, ten pounds, something like that. The apps are sometimes free, I pay three pounds extra for the Android one. Um, it's going to be of most use this video to owners of diesels because that's the car that I'm going to be testing it on. If you've got a petrol, there's extra things you need to do to establish that you're getting a spark. So, you know, you might even need a current, um, you know, a current clamp or um, or spark plug testers. There's there's any number of things really, or to inspect the actual spark plugs themselves. And I've got a spark plug testing video. In my list so um, so yeah so we're going to be dealing with all the the basic factors that mean a car can start in the first place and they're going to be the same bits of information you're looking for whether it's cold starting or hot starting and um, yeah hopefully it'll be of use to you so we'll go out to the car and uh, we'll take it from there okay so I go into talk pro and um, I've got the ignition on uh, on the car so in a second uh, Talk Pro will be communicating with the Bluetooth dongle that's plugged into the car's diagnostic port. Non Talk Pro there's um, it, dependent on the type of problem that I'm looking to solve um, or just in general the information that I'm looking for you can set up all sorts of different screens really and um, and so this particular one that um, that I'm going for let's just bring it up now here we go so uh, so it's this screen here and uh, and on the top left corner is the coolant temperature as you can see top middle will be the battery voltage top right will be the revs and I'm, you can see I'm using high low values uh, gauges on those Fuel rail pressure, once again, that's a high low value. And then bottom middle and bottom right, I've got fuel rail and revs again, but in a graph form. And um, and so as soon as this is connected up, which will be any second now, and we've got the flashing green um, symbols, flashing green dots. So we're ready to go. So I've got this non-start situation, so I'm just going to turn the engine over, uh, uh, capture some data and then I'll talk you through uh, the sort of things that you'll be looking for. Excellent, so uh, I'll talk you through that afterwards. So we've got the data captured here. The voltage, battery voltage, didn't capture, unfortunately. Uh, that hasn't gone down like uh, or recorded the, the drop that I would have liked, but, uh, but not to worry. Um, and I'll explain why that's not that significant on this occasion. So we'll start at the beginning, which is coolant temperature. It was 7 degrees Celsius outside on the day, and the coolant temperature reflected the outside air temperature and that's what you're looking for in a stone cold engine you want your coolant temperature to be within one or two degrees celsius of the outside air temperature um, the engine computer uses the coolant temperature to determine fueling but it will also use it to decide whether to activate the glow plugs if um, if the temperature is under a certain level so if that coolant temperature isn't accurate your fueling is going to be out 
uh, which can create starting problems or a complete non-start. Um, and your glow plugs uh, won't work if, if they're required. Then as we move on to the, the voltage, you're basically looking for your battery voltage to hopefully not drop below 10 volts. Um, if it does drop lower than that, it's still not the end of the world providing the other information stacks up. So, um, so I can't give you what the battery voltage dropped to on this, but um, like I say, if, if you're looking for just over 10 volts, then you, you'll be fine with that. More significant is the revs. So as you can see, during cranking, don't forget the engine didn't start. So just during cranking alone, it showed a revs of 204. And on a common rail diesel, you're looking for around about 200 to 250 RPM. And the reason you're looking for that figure is you need the engine speed at that figure and the pistons to be moving at, at that kind of rate in order to create sufficient compression to um, to start the engine and um, and if the rpm is too low basically the um, the engine computer may not even fire the injectors so you will have a non-start situation and and continue to have a non-start situation so if your revs are significantly lower than that, and you'll hear it, you'll, you'll hear that your engine's slow turning over, then that's when you need to be looking at the battery voltage. And if your battery voltage, voltage is still, um, you know, healthy, so if your battery voltage is, say, you know, over 10 volts, but your RPM is 120 or, you know, 100 or something like that, then that's showing then that the starter isn't turning the engine over even, uh, and it's not actually drawing enough power from the battery. You do want your battery voltage to drop. So, uh, so that could be poor starter connections, voltage drop on the starter connections, um, and, uh, or the actual internals of the starter motor, um, you know, burnt out brushes, um, heavily uh, soiled on the inside of the starter so you might need a starter motor refurbish or you might just need to clean up the contacts there and then as we move on to the fuel rail pressure as you can see just from 200 rpm we were getting up to 5400 psi on the fuel pressure now a common rail diesel needs to be uh, it's around about the two and a half thousand psi upwards and the reason for that is um, the in order to atomize the fuel sufficiently um, because if, if the fuel isn't if it's not high enough pressure and the fuel isn't atomized then you'll have a poor starting basically or once again you may have a complete non-start situation so you're looking for that rail pressure to be over two and a half thousand psi and as you can see there really healthy pressure there no problems at all and then we've got the graphs and the graphs are quite interesting as well because because not only capturing maximum figures you're actually seeing the behavior that gets to that maximum figure so as you can see on the fuel rail psi once the engine starts turning you can see the psi shoot up in a nice straight linear fashion and and that's what you're looking for you're looking for that big shoot up of fuel rail psi and that shows you that even at, at 200 uh, rpm the psi is is being generated by the high pressure fuel pump so that shows that the high pressure fuel pump is in good order and um, whereas if it was like slowly building up slowly but surely up to that figure that might indicate either um, a battery problem the engine not being turned over enough but if the engine's got good rpm but you're struggling to build up rail pressure that could be a leaking injector that could be an injector excessively leaking back it could be leaking through the body the injector the fuel high pressure pump itself might be failing but they're very reliable so that's quite a way down the list but you you might have some kind of fuel leak going on there 
but you could even have a clogged fuel filter so it's struggling to draw the fuel through in order to build up that rail pressure. So look out for that nice big spike on the rail pressure there. And then same again on the revs. It, it's not a direct spike um, on the revs, but this little green line just here, let's just bring it up, this little green line just here, that's a nice steep um, line going up. So, okay, you got that little blip just kind of part way through, but that's a nice, um, a nice straight increase in the revs so that shows there's a good draw of power coming from the battery the start is working great and it's spinning up the engine to uh, sufficient rpm so all in all those figures are looking good and i've just got this other slide just here just to show you that even if the rpm is down see how that rpm it's down to 167 there you can see the rail pressure is still very high so you don't need massive RPM in order to build up the rail pressure, but you do need that RPM to still be around about the 200 mark in order for it to uh, for your pistons to have the speed to compress the fuel air mix and to get the car started. So with those figures there, um, that's what you're looking for. So when you do your tests you know see if yours are a mile out see if your coolant temperature is nowhere near what it should be on a stone cold engine see if your battery voltage is dropping you know way too low down to eight volts or something like that see if your rpm is sufficient see if the rail pressure is sufficient and see on the graphs if your build up is nice and sharp showing that all's well there and uh, and hopefully by cross referencing that information you should be, um, uh, you know, uh, well into uh, being able to diagnose what your starting problem is on a common rail diesel. And thanks very much for watching.